Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a match between Monkuki and Cybernetic Pony on Rooftop Showdown. Let us begin. So, Monkuki is starting out in the west side of the map. Cybernetic Pony is starting out in the east side of the map. Cybernetic Pony is going for Greca. Monkuki has not quite chosen his species yet. Still on that. We'll get back to that when he's done. And this is on version 1.5.3, so you'll notice right away that Cybernetic Pony has a starting Sepi Faro pair and three starting RPs, which is one of the big changes of the new version. Probably the biggest change in the new version, really. There's a bunch of bug fixes. Those are also big. But in terms of the actual game, Monkey going for back gear. So in terms of the actual game, this is huge. Both players, everything I've ever mentioned before about players going for an economic start is completely moot because all players have an economic start right away. So I've got to figure out better things to comment on. I should also point out that this version of the map, as will all updated maps, has basically thrown the money into these RPs out of the initial money for every player. So the initial funds for the players used to be 300 QP, or 300 LC, 40 QP. Now it's just 60 and 40, which is the cost. It's minus the cost of the three RPs. Saturday point going for a very quick, very quick rush. Okay, not that quick, actually. Two minutes into the game. Moderately quick rush. In this map, that's not That's not a surprising time for rush. While Monkuki is about a minute and a half down from there, just scouting out, seeing what Cybernetic Pony is up to, and he will find the Sepi Faro pair shortly, though he is progressing slowly through time, and that's not a good thing, because if he was progressing faster, he would see that much sooner. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony, at the three-minute mark, is dealing a lot of damage to Monkuki's Species Selector. Well, that really doesn't mean much, but we will figure out once this blue time up comes along what is happening, and... Oh. Did Severin Pony mess up? I think Severin Pony may have messed up. It looks like his Seppi did not get into regeneration mode properly for whatever reason. But, it doesn't matter. Monkuki is fully aware of what's going on. He did check and see what happens up a Severin Pony's future, and he does know that there is a big rush coming that... Six octaves this time around instead of four. Monkuki, however, at this point in time, does have 348 LC, so he will have that amount of money throughout, and he knows full well to expect this. He can get a foundation easily, he can get a depot easily. He's not focused on doing that, though. He is getting more RPs. Getting into QP RP, actually, not a terrible idea, because he does want to get... It... He... Well... If he wants to get any vehicles, he's going to need Q-Plasma, because the amount of Q-Plasma required to build a depot is your starting Q-Plasma. You're starting 40... But, at the same time, against six Octos, it may almost be a better idea just to station half a dozen Zion Pulsers behind a couple foundations and just use that. And then afterwards, sorry, Zion Veer. Station which is Zion Veer behind foundations and then use that. Just because it's cheaper to get the same firepower. Granted, they don't have as much health, but that's what the foundations are for. The foundations just keep, them, keep healing them up. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony is echoing out that rush, so there's nothing to really worry about. Monkuki is going to see this eventually. It looks like he actually was playing assuming this is going to happen. He was definitely not overreacting, definitely keeping his cool. At the possibility of an echo, which I failed to consider. But, of course, Cybernetic Pony could still un-echo. He could still go back on that. He could still undo what he had previously done. There's nothing saying he can't. So I would be actually a little bit surprised if he did, mind you. I Normally when players echo out strategies like this, they stay echoed out. But it wouldn't be terribly surprising if he decided just to completely throw Monkuki off. Completely throw a curveball and make it impossible for him to tell what's going on. That being said, I doubt that he's going to do that. He's, he seems pretty set and staying in his base. There is, however, still... Well, the Amplitude passed right here. Right at the minus three minute mark or so, so it's not unlikely, it's just... Well, actually it is unlikely. At this point it's pretty much impossible. Cybernetic Pony is not undoing this, he is staying in his main base, this is set. Monkuki, on the other hand, he's built up a little bit economically, but not that much. He's focusing heavily on building infantry and attacking on his own, but he's really not focused on a whole lot at all. He has a couple more Zion Beer. Okay, so he did build a Zion Beer that I mentioned earlier. And those are simply starting units. This is a starting Zion Beer, those are the starting Shin Beer and Teth Beer. Cybernetic Pony has expanded nicely to the south, but Monkuki himself has not. 
expanded at all. He's got no holdings outside of his main base, which is a little bit unfortunate for him. While Severn Pony is further up and also building quite a bit. He's further up in the future, but he does have just more economy coming in. He's getting reefs up, so he's going to be getting probably tech. He's probably going to get his advanced structures, and then from there get the spire. While Mon Kuki has not built anything for that, just building more infantry. Pumping out Zion Pulsers and... Sorry, Zion Veer. No one ever builds Zion Veer much, so I'm tempted to say... I always want to say Zion Pulser first. And going for a proxy of his own. Getting this Jin Veer into a foundation, and that from there probably build a depot. There we go. And these Zion Veer will become Zion Pulsers, and from there, a very quick attack right next to Cybernetic Pony's base, where Cybernetic Pony does not really suspect... Probably doesn't suspect. He might suspect. And in fact, his Reef... No, it's actually out of Beers Arcticus that sees it, but that's out of vision. Not to mention further in the past, so Severny Pony has less time to react to this, but... The depot is only half done at the 336 mark. It's going to be fully done by about the 4 minute mark. And Severny Pony... He's... Well, he's aware of some inventory being outside of his base, but he probably isn't suspecting any rush strategies. Vecchio really doesn't go for foundation rushes like this at all. It's extremely rare. And he doesn't appear to be looking for it either. And he has gone for advanced structures, getting it in about now. There it is. Advanced structures tech is being constructed. One of the Zion beers throwing his life away, although this is further in the future going to be echoed out. Not actually what's going to happen ultimately. This is going to happen ultimately is Zion pulsers. Now, Monkuki should wait until all of them come up, and it looks like he's doing exactly that, waiting until all the Zion beer come into the base. And he may be producing more from his annex, but he doesn't appear to be doing that in earnest. Just getting that last Zion Veer in, and a couple more foundations as well. Nice for healing. But now, Cybernetic Pony fully aware of the strategy. He's given it away. So Cybernetic Pony is moving his Octopod. Actually, he hasn't propagated yet, but he's probably going to move the Octopod back. Probably going to jump back a bit to preempt this if he can. He is moving his Octopod up to see where that might be coming from. Or there's another... Well, going for the middle here. Good idea. Make sure that Monkuki is not expanding here, because players have lost on this map, because their opponents have expanded up to the center. But there we go, Monkuki has at the about three seconds up and then playable pass the 447 mark. He has gone for a powerful attack, and that is well those design pulsers right there hitting everything and Well, getting the Arcticus first, which is typically what soaks up the damage. Separate any point moving his Arcticus into the optimal position for that. He had done that at the beginning of the game. This is very common for some players to do. It makes it rather difficult for your opponent to just attack, move into your base, and win that way. So Monkuki doesn't... He has a Chrono Energy to move these into a better position. Doesn't have to right now, though. The Octopod actually moved himself into a bad position. Cybernetic Pony trying to deal with this, but the Foundation's getting in the way, forcing the Octopod back, getting a couple of Octos instead, and those will also go down. Not before taking down a couple units of their own. More expansion, however, nicely done by Cybernetic Pony, making sure he's not being completely pushed back by this. Now, Monkuki should do the same. He really needs to send out... Uh, he should get another Zion Veer and use that to expand in the meantime. While he's doing this attack... Don't just rely on this attack alone. Try the attack while expanding. It's a very common thing to do in, in other RTS games. And it's a very powerful thing to do. Because your opponent isn't able to get in your way. You can just expand with impunity while you're attacking. Admittedly, if they get rid of your attack, the cheese attack like this especially, it's going to be a problem. But if you expand while also building a safer follow-up inside the main base, it can work out quite nicely. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony has jumped back a little bit before this, but he is... Taking a lot of damage. His main base... I'm a bit surprised how quickly this is going down, but the foundation's healing. It's not terribly surprising. However, Monkuki should be trying to heal the Zion Pulsar. It's basically dead. The Zion Pulsar, he needs to go back near the pillow past and jump into the depot with it. Instead of getting a couple more foundations, might actually be a better long-term strategy, though this is a cheese strategy, which in no way is long-term. However, that Zion Pulsar has gone down. It's now a Zion Veer should go back and rebuild. It looks like that's exactly what it's going to be doing. A Zion Veer has been built, but it is being sent to the front lines. No, he needs to use that to expand. He needs to get more RPs. He needs to... Well, okay, he should cons strongly consider doing it. He does, strictly speaking, need to do that. Because if he wins off this, he's won. But he, he does need to consider it strongly. And it looks like... Cybernetic Pony is running away. He's just moving everything around the map, trying to get away from this attack, trying to make sure that he can just... Well, the reefs aren't going to really help him too much. The Arcticus is the big prize. If that gets out... If that goes into anywhere else in the map, it's basically over. Because he can just rebuild, and Mongoogie needs to be aware of where this is, and he is definitely trying to keep an, an eye on it. The Zion Veer is 
keeping tabs on that Arcticus, but the Arcticus has flown over a, well, flown over an obstruction designed for has to go around it. And that is still not a whole lot that Seven Rage Pony can do. He has lost his main base, and his Arcticus is all he really has left. Monkuki, on the other hand, at 736 mark, not changing up the strategy too much, but it looks like he is going straight for that Arcticus, trying to finish it off. And no, he's not. He's moving the Zion Veer back. Why is he moving the Zion Veer back? It needs to kill that Arcticus. That Arcticus is the only thing keeping Cybernetic Pony in the game. If that goes down, Cybernetic Pony goes down with it. But why is Cybernetic Pony putting it at one of the top ridges, not putting it anywhere the Zion Veers can easily get to without getting Skip Teleport? That being said, Skip Teleport is pretty easy for Zion Pulsars to get. And it says Zion Veers is getting Skip Teleport. That is impossible. But Zion Pulsars can get it without too much issue. It's 25 10, 25 LC, 10 QP, and that's it. That's all you need. Whereas. This Arcticus needs to move slowly, and already a Seppi has been built, a Faro will be built soon after, and that will start it up again. The tech's already built, so this is going to just become a very quick Spire. The Zion Pulsars are in place, and they actually can see the Arcticus, they can hit it! So the Arcticus will go down, but not before building... Well, there it goes, Zion Arcticus has gone down, Severing Pony jumping back to try to move it into a better position to get out of the way, but still, Severing Pony is on the back foot strongly. I'm impressed that he's still going for this. I'm really impressed that he's not just given up. He's continuing to attack. He's continuing, or rather, continuing to try to build up something. He's not attacking so much, but he is trying to do something. Give me Zarticus out of the way. Getting a mound for vision, but not for... Actually, yeah, for vision primarily. Smart Idol isn't going to be much use at this point, nor is Auto Hierarchy. But he is getting advanced structures tech still. He is keeping his tech going. He might... I don't think he's going to get gate tech. He doesn't have any LCRPs to do that with. Actually, he has two. The... Never mind, he could in fact get some fairly high tech. I wouldn't recommend it. He doesn't have any units to build tech with, but at this point, Monkuki has basically abandoned his search, which is not good. Not good at all. If that search is abandoned, that is going to lose him the game. He has, however, found these RPs. We'll get rid of them. Monkuki a bit further back. Actually, Seven Hundred Ponies jumped back even further, but we did see Monkuki is destroying Seven Hundred Ponies RPs. In his main base, not doing too much. In the proxy, he does have an annex. He does have a bit more sustainability. He actually took over. Nice. He took over. Mon or he took over Cybernetic Pony's main base. Monkuki is definitely taking the advantage to heart, but Cybernetic Pony has not been found out. His Arctic is still nicely hidden. He can't build too much from where he is now. Now this is. I'm. I'm not sure if this is going to get drawn out because this is already kind of getting drawn out. I mean, Cybernetic Pony does have a bit of a chance, but mostly because of the money in the bank, and he's losing a lot of RPs. He doesn't have a whole lot of room for building triads. Granted, he doesn't need a whole lot of room to build triads with. He actually just needs enough room for a Spire, an Octo, and a... S well... Octo, Seppi, Faro together. We give him Seppi Pods and Faro Pods. So that gives him something, but even then, I don't know. It's a little bit tricky. I think I'll just put this game a bit... Move this game along a bit faster, just because it'll probably drag on a bit if I don't. Anyway, Severnity Pony is... Well, he's not really able to handle this. Monkuki getting an aerial control center, so... Monkuki will very quickly be able to find everything. He's gotten a couple more RPs out. There's one more that was floating towards the south edge very slowly. It's run out of fuel. Severnity Pony, at the 11-11 mark, we see this RP has completely run out of fuel. The Arcticus moving along once again, continuing along in its quest to find some safe place to land and build. And this is... Really, there's no safe place to land. Rooftop Showdown is... A kind of a knife fight. It's a bit of a knife fight map. It's not the most knife fight map, but it is still fairly open. It's fairly easy to get around. It's difficult to hide units in. It's difficult to put units in a position where they can't be hit by something. Even here, they're going to be hit by Zion Pulsars, so it's not an easy map to just recover from. Separate Pony making a valiant effort to do so, but I am not holding out hope. Still, this Arcticus has been left on its own. It is building up some units. It is getting the Seppi. The Faro should be soon coming once generations out. There we go. There's the Faro. So now Cybernetic Pony does have a proxy base right next to Monkuki's main. Though Monkuki's main is completely mined out. These two QP crates aren't, but these RPs definitely are moving to the center. And he is... There we go. Getting what he needs. The Shin Pulsers. However... Ah, he is definitely scouting out. He knows where to scout out for Cybernetic Pony's base. And he will be finding it fairly soon, but... Oh, no Seppi Pods coming up. That's a big thing. He does have an Octo, however. He can build Seppi Pods, but Cybernetic Pony needs to build Seppi Pods right now. 
He can't get away with Faro Pods. He has to build Sebi Pods because the Sebi Pods are what's going to be getting him what he needs. And what he needs is quite simply anti air. Faro Pods, however, not so effective. The Shin Chargers are pretty much. They're partial counters to them. They are bombers as well, but the Shin Chargers can detect cloaked. So the big advantage of Faro Pods goes away as a result, just at a stroke. On the other hand, Monkuki getting Gate Tech, not Summoning Pony. Monkuki instead getting Gate Tech, and Summoning Pony shouldn't get Gate Tech. He couldn't if he wanted to. But that is going to be still fairly powerful. I mean, Monkuki getting Gate Tech basically means everything is now able to teleport. All his units can skip teleport. And if he wants to, he can just Chronoport back. So once he finds out where Summoning Pony is, he can take him out three minutes in the past. At this point, Summoning Pony has lost the game. There is no way out of this. Whatever Cybernetic Pony does, Monkuki will be able to Chrono Core back and counter it. And Monkuki has the economy to support this for the rest of the game. Even with these raids going on, there's enough money in the bank for Monkuki to Chrono Core back his entire army three times over. Actually, let me just verify that. 78 each. Yeah, yeah, basically, that's... It's a little bit below that, but right now it's enough. That's 78 each, that's 80 per, that's 280 for all three of these, or 240 for all three of these. That's a total of 720 for the entire group, and he has 738 QP. He can do exactly what I said. And he still has the economy to he still has the income of QP, so he's fine. Oh, and there's a Ted Searcher here too. Yeah, Cybernetic Pony really has got nothing going for him. Semi Pods would have been a good idea, but it looks like that is going to be it. Cybernetic Pony. We are at his point of view, and he doesn't have any of his units standing up at this point. And that's really not gonna help him too much. He needs them standing up, he needs to have them working for him. They're not going to do anything in pro dead mode. I guess he doesn't have the chronology to do so. He has one order's worth. The best he can do is make the Seppi stand up. And he is not doing that. So this is game. Cybernetic Pony will be throwing in the towel shortly. Or it'll be thrown in for him. One way or the other. But that was an interesting game. Kind of a cheese counter cheese going on there. And that lasted far longer than I expected to for Rooftop Showdown. So I'll have another game for you guys shortly, so stay tuned.